Hi, everyone. It's Elliot and Todd. While you're waiting for our next full episode, we wanted to share some bar snacks with you. What are bar snacks, you ask? Well, we're sitting at the bar with a few friends to discuss some light, snackable design and pop culture topics for you, the listener. So join us and a few of our friends as we share our snacks with you. If you enjoy listening to podcasts like this one, you also enjoy research. But who has time to waste getting a library card? Now you don't have to. Using the latest in overseas holographic and laminating technologies, VIX IDs provides library cards for any spot you want to get into anywhere in the world. We've already done the research for you. Library of Congress, no sweat. New York Public Library of Ghostbusters fame, you betcha. We've gotten people into the esteemed libraries of Harvard, Yale, and Faber College. With over 3,000 institutions in our database, feel free to check out as many books as you like from as many places as you like to be kept as long as you like. The world's knowledge can be literally at your fingertips or under your bed or in your car or at a friend's house or even for sale online. When you do your research, do it with VIX. All right, Kyle. Mr. Cal Webster, thanks for practicing extreme social distancing and calling in to our bar here. We got you on speaker. <laughs> Why don't you tell us, tell us and tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. What does, what makes Kyle Webster tick besides buying Todd and I some drinks? Well, yeah, that's the first thing I want to do is spend all my money on alcohol for both of you. So let's start with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But then the second thing that makes me tick um, is drawing. I like to draw. So that's... That's what I want to do with my life, and that's what I've wanted to do forever. <laughs> that's a great, it simple. Yeah, that's a great plan. That's a great plan, um, and um, the, we're we're glad to have some time with you, Kyle. We know your schedule is really busy. We're glad you stopped by our little humble bar here to have a chat about design and pop culture related things. We've got uh, a lot of really hard questions. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna put you on the line here and make you pick some favorites of some things. You ready to roll? Yeah, sure. I, All right. You know, if we could stop for just a second here, I didn't know if you wanted me to tell like more about what I actually do, or if you wanted me to just keep it simple. There, <laughs> that's entirely up to you, man. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and, and say a little bit more um, yeah. about CalTWebster dot com and and. Um, and then we'll ed- just you know, yeah, edit and, it out later. And, yeah, and, and then all the, all, the, all, the t- all the tasteful <laughs> yeah. nudes that you draw, which, you know, it's, cl- it's classy. It's classy stuff, everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's just give us a, give us a, um, a download. Well, I mentioned I, like, I, love, I love to draw. And what I've been trying to do my whole life is trick people into paying me to do it. And so I've figured out numerous different ways to, uh, to get that done. And so the, the latest trick I pulled was getting Adobe to hire me to... Uh, basically draw, but um, do so with their software and tell them how to make it uh, better for artists everywhere. So that's kind of a a great little trick there. Um, And prior to that, I was working as an illustrator and drawing and designing things. And um, anything I can do that keeps me drawing makes me happy. And uh, I am also part of the huge creative community of illustrators um, who work digitally and have supported that community by making Photoshop brushes uh, for them for about eight years now. That's right. Uh, so many of our listeners um, probably they just know Kyle's brushes, but this is yeah. the actual Kyle of Kyle's brushes. So that's yeah. me. If you open that's Photoshop right. and open the brushes panel, you will see my name in there, which is my big claim to fame. And I'll probably never do anything as, as cool as that again. <laughs> ah, of course you will. Of now you could you write a virus that embeds itself in Photoshop <laughs> as well, and that would that would yeah. be cool. People definitely remember your name then when you wipe out all their files. <laughs> wow, great idea, Elliot. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't worry, every we'll edit that part out, Kyle. That'll be our. Scene. I'm glad we recorded that. Yeah. yeah. All right, Kyle. Let me ask you. Uh, we'll start with a really hard question. What's an iconic design slash illustration from your childhood that still resonates today? Oh, uh, I know you guys are going to love this one because I listen to your podcast and I love it. But um, Alfred E. Newman's face. Yes. Oh, is okay, just... Kyle. Kyle wins. This is it. Like, <laughs> I am, he's officially I am my le- favorite person to buy me a drink. 
<laughs> I am less I am less surprised that Alfred E. Newman is your choice, but I'm more surprised that you're listening to our podcast. <laughs> for that. Kyle's full of surprises. Oh yeah. No, this is this is without without kidding, this is my favorite design podcast because you guys talk about the stuff I want to talk about and um, I guess we're all roughly the same age, so there's a lot of stuff that you talk about that makes me happy because it's, yeah, it's talking about things that inspired me to become an artist. And Mad Magazine is top of that list because of Absolutely. the art, for, mostly because of the art of Mort Drucker, who just yes. could draw his pants yeah. off. And um, yeah. I was so, like, I wanted to be Mort Drucker when I was a kid. But there's Alfred E. Newman, yeah. his face, yeah. his, the cover is, you know, that's that. And um, the, the little, the little uh, the, you know, if you guys know these books, Tintin or Tintin. The, his little face mm-hmm. at the top of every mm-hmm. tension adventure, in this little bar. So yeah, comics, I guess, is where where it was big time. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Oh man, all right, yeah. Mad Magazine is the uh, is the red thread that continues to loop all of us cool kids together. I went to that's the right. offices in New York, and uh, I met oh. Sam Viviano, and um, oh, wow, yeah, I was there trying to get work. Uh, this was like, uh-huh. geez, a long time ago, um, but it was amazing. I got to do a little tour. And they threw me a bone and they let me do the DC Comics uh, internal Christmas card invitation for that year. Because okay. you know, that's when DC and Mad were, were yeah, merged yeah. or whatever. Um, that was as far as I ever got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Sam Viviano was a longtime illustrator and then he was the yeah. art director of Mad, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Exactly. That's great. I love that. That's amazing. You know, it's such a good story. Okay, so here's, here's another hard question for you. Or, or we, we think it could be challenging. What is a logo, past or present, that whenever you see it, it just brings a smile to your face? Oh, um, so many logos out there. And I'm a huge fan of logos. Um, this is going to sound so lame. <laughs> <laughs> I bet we could make it sound lamer. <laughs> no, but yeah. do, you know the, do you know the Puma logo? Yeah. Puma? Yeah. It's just yeah. a Puma. It's yeah. it's not exciting. I mean, it is the most literal whatever. But uh, that makes me happy because as a kid, um, I grew up overseas, and so that logo was was maybe more visible than it is in the states, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just associated it with everything cool, whether like sneakers or athletic clothing or whatever. And I wanted to have clothing that had that on it, and it never did. So it was kind of an aspirational thing. Um, and so, anyway, uh, there's something about that logo that just makes me think about being a kid and wanting to play sports and thinking that was a cool design, I guess. So, probably yeah. not the answer well, there, you're expecting. <laughs> no, no well, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of love in the um, consistency of that, too. It's been like that for a really long time, and um, I, I, I'm with you. I dig it. But there's a ton of logos I like, so that's hard to, that's hard to answer. You know what? You'll laugh at this. When I think of uh, Puma, I always think of when uh, Jack Burton's coming back from the airport in Big Trouble in Little China. Ooh, it's a oh, Puma truck. Go. It's a Puma truck that cuts him off in traffic, and he leans on the horn in the Pork Chop Express. No way! I mean, I've seen that movie a dozen times and didn't even notice that. Yeah, I'm an expert at that movie. I thought I was, but like I'm that not. movie's been banned <laughs> from our trivia group because I uh-huh. drop drop shit from that movie in conversation so much. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> I do too. All right, Kyle, this one this one's going to be a toughie. Uh, who is or what is your favorite cartoon character? That's very easy for me to answer. It's Bugs Bunny. Oh, okay, um, okay. And the reason it's Bugs Bunny is because my grandma. Uh, was from New York and um, sounds sound. She's dead now, but she sounded like Bugs Bunny when she talked. Like she had the same voice. Um, oh, wow! And like every time I think of her and I think of her laughing, she's a very very funny person. She just wanted to make uh-huh. jokes twenty four seven. And when she joked and laughed, she sounded like Bugs Bunny. Uh, the accent, everything, because he's got that New York accent. It's like a mixture of, mm-hmm. I guess, Bronx and maybe Brooklyn or uh, something. Yeah, so and, that Borscht Belt thing going. Yeah, oh, yeah, perfect. So yeah, Bugs Bunny, hands down. Did Did you ever ask your grandma to sing opera? Like no, Seville <laughs> stuff. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> no, but I sang recently for uh, my wife um, a version of Tiffany's "I Think We're Alone Now," which is. Uh, um, yeah. Also a cover of another song, but anyway, 
uh, I sang it as Elmer Fudd because that was something I heard on the radio when I was in middle school, and um, there's a version of it. They said, "Wabbit behave." Okay. I think uh, anyway. <laughs> I bet you think I, 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 you, you, you keep know, going, keep going. Yeah, my my guess is if you sing enough of that, you you yourself will be alone. <laughs> I, there was a comedian like a million years ago that used to do Elmer Fudd singing um, Bruce Springsteen's um, oh, yeah. I'm on, on Fire. No way. Um, yeah, it was like, I'm widening in your car. <laughs> Does the whole, you know, because it's a really like dramatic verse. And then at the end, it's like, fire. <laughs> That's a good gimmick. I like it. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for swinging by the bar. Thank you so much for picking up our tab and for giving us a ride home. <laughs> we really uh, appreciate your time today and your generosity as always, and uh, and just your talent. You keep a uh, keep a lot of folks like us inspired. Yes, you do, Kyle. That's very kind. Thanks. Uh, likewise, and of course, as I said before, I just love your podcast. Uh, you guys are doing something amazing, and I tell everybody about it who I can. I just hope they listen because it's fun and. The best thing about it is every time you guys do it, there's no filler. It's all killer, no filler. And I, that's the kind of podcast I want to hear. That's the way we like our podcasts and our hamburgers. That's right. <laughs> and our beers, speaking of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's get back to the bar. <laughs>